Greetings, all you mumins and monsters out there. I'm Deuce Diz Din, once again coming at you with another Star vs. the Forces of Evil episode review. This time it's Season 4's Episode 20 titled Pizza Party. At least the side A part is titled that. Where we see a lone mumin village that is actually under attack. This is the village of a young Mina Loveberry, who is a simple rag seller on the streets selling her wares, until a giant monster attacks her home village. The village ends up being saved by Solaria Butterfly, uh, with a young M Eclipsa strapped to her chest. So that kind of goes into showing that the young Eclipsa was exposed to monsters and was actually able to see them in a non-threatening light from a young age because of the efforts of her mother. We then come to find out that the spider was actually just trying to get to its nest because the mumins built their settlement on top of the spider's nest. Th that goes to just show that, you know, since ancient times, the mumins were constantly abusing their power and just taking over lands that belonged to the monsters. And while the people end up cheering Solaria, when Solaria gives a call to arms to have the various people come and join her in the effort to take down the monsters in a new Solarian warrior squad, many of them have just kind of resigned themselves to their fate of being just be beset upon by monsters time and time again, much to the aggravation of Solari herself. However, a young Mina Loveberry actually does go up to Solaria and does thank her for her efforts of saving their village. Solaria, seeing a spark, I guess you would call it, in the young Mina, asks her to come along and join in her warrior program. Despite Mina's misgivings at first and not feeling that she's good enough, Solaria says that she sees a spark of greatness in Mina, much to Mina's delight as this is more than likely the very first time she's actually been given any kind of real worth. And that goes to show why so many people were willing to join Solaria's cause because she just had this you know, zeal for this and she had this charisma that caused people to want to join her. And after, you know, waking up from her flashback, Mina notices that the rooster is crowing and it's time to take down Eclipsa and her family. Meanwhile, Moon is trying her best to kind of de-escalate the whole situation and explain that her giving, you know, joining forces with Mina was the only way to settle things down. But Star is not having any of it. She is pissed and erupts in a righteous magical fury. And while Moon tries her best to calm her down, Star's just not having it. But Moon tries her best to explain that this was all because of Eclipsa. If Eclipsa had been a better queen, this had never would have happened. But Star is just not buying into it. And Moon, seeing the futility of trying to argue this, simply says that it's time for Eclipsa to turn herself in. You know, despite the fact that Eclipse is kind of appalled that, you know, Moon would go along with this. But, you know, Moon just snaps back saying that part of why she joined was because of Eclipsa, because Eclipsa caused her to be trapped in the magical realm. But Eclipsa just brushes this aside saying that that was an accident, you know, which it, ultimately it was. There's uh, merits to both sides, but it feels like Moon went a little too far during this. But she tells them, tells Eclipsa to hand over the rule of the kingdom to her in order to de-escalate the situation and they will banish Eclipsa and her family from Muni so they can live in peace. And Eclipsa, always one to just go for the option of saving her family, relinquishes her right to the crown, much to Star's dismay. But Eclipsa tells her, <coughs> <coughs> That she gave it the old college try. 
you know, Eclipsa tried her best, the best she could, and it just wasn't good enough. So, now she has no other option, as she would hate to lose her family, and I understand this. And so, Mean is given the crown, and the martial law basically is declared across the monster village. And the High Commission celebrates, all but Hekapu, who isn't too much into the, you know, celebration for the most part. To the point where she creates a clone who can go off and do its own thing. So she can do her own thing, I guess I should say. Meanwhile, Eclipse kind of tries to s explain the situation to a basically comatose Globgore. Who isn't in the best of shape. And Moon says that, you know, after this is all over, Globgore will be healed and they will be free to go. Although, Star kind of questions whether or not the people will be safe under Moon's rule. You know, at least the monster people. And as they get ready to surrender to Mina, you know, Star's not too happy about Eclipse just giving up like this. But, you know... Moon explains that that's what a true queen does. She, you know, gives of herself to her people, whether they end up loving her or not. And as Mina arrives at the predetermined date to take Eclipsa into custody, Moon explains that there's no need for any further violence. You know, Eclipsa has handed over rule of the kingdom and she will be leaving Muni. But Mina is having none of that. She wants blood. She wants to crush Eclipsa, Meteora, Globgore, all of them. But, you know, Moon is having none of that. There has been a, you know, her plan was for a peaceful resolution to all of this. And she is not having any of Mina's tomfoolery. And while Mina goes in to just demand that it's too lenient. They need to deliver her a decisive blow here and now. Moon even threatens to take away the Solarian power she bestowed upon all of the warriors. But Mina refutes this, saying that with an army like this, they could go about destroying all the monsters, giving the lands to the humans. Moon has had enough of this and casts a spell to undo the Solarian warriors' magical powers, but it does nothing as you know and when they're so shocked by this Mina reveals that while Moon did give them their power they pledged their loyalty to Solaria and thus their conviction has overpowered any of Moon's spells basically which damn that's uh, pretty incredible for the most part and thus, Mina gives the command for the Solarian warriors to round up all of the monsters so Mina can basically just throw them off a cliff. And Star's just like, what were you thinking giving Mina this kind of powers? How did you not think this would not just turn out sideways with someone like her at the helm? And when they go to try to escape, they're blocked off by the Solarian warriors, as Mina has decided that she'll take them all down for interfering with what she defines as justice, only for the group to be saved at the last minute by one of Hakapu's portals. Mina declares that all of her warriors should go searching for the escaped convicts, specifically Eclipsa, as Mina goes into the royal chambers to find Globgor, only to find the room empty. As it's revealed after she leaves that Moon, uh, River, as well as um, Eddie, have actually tried their best to hide Globgor and use this opportunity to sneak him out of the palace. Only for Star, Marco, and Eclipsa to find themselves, well, Eclipsa and Moon, I should say, to suddenly find themselves in the bog, having been saved by Hekapu of all people, thus ending Pizza Party. We then open up on 
ta the tavern at the end of the multiverse, where we see that, you know, Hecapu really wants to thank you for saving their butts there, but it's just like, Hecapu, you're part of the reason why they're in this situation in the first place. But Hecapu had brought them here as a way of getting away from that bad situation, bringing them to the tavern at the end of the multiverse, a place at the edge of where reality begins and it ends, as we can see this dark shadowy section that is the end of all reality and existence, which, uh, why you would be anywhere close to that, I have no idea. But, you know, Moon and Eclipse the notice that they don't seem to be very welcome here, and Hecapu ends up explaining that the tavern at the end of the multiverse is a place for various people from different dimensions to come and escape magical related issues as well as pat power hungry rulers, which uh Moon and Eclipse are basically both of. But Star's not having this, she wants to go back to Muni, she doesn't want to run away from her issue, she wants to deal with this head on. But Hecapu's all for just staying here for the rest of existence and just hanging out as Muni's just kind of become a bit of a drag and is basically going to be burned to the ground with Mina in charge of everything. But Eclipse is not having it, she wants to go back and save Globgor, although Moon tells them that ultimately they don't have a plan and there's no way to really take down Eclipse, uh, Mina and her Solarian warriors, a thing of which uh, Star blames Moon for. Ultimately, they wouldn't be in this issue if Moon hadn't empowered them, and Star makes it clear that she does not want to speak with her mother at all. So Eclipsa, having no real other options, decides to play a bit of pool just to kind of get her mind off the situation, at least to a certain degree. And she ends up actually, of all things, thanking Moon, which it surprises both me and Moon, honestly. But, you know, it's, Eclipsa realized that it had to be Moon who had talked to um, Romulus in order to get Globgor freed from the crystal. And Moon's kind of taken aback by this revelation. And the fact that Eclipse doesn't seem to show any real hard feelings about the situation past this point. Meanwhile, as Mina gets ready to toss all the monsters off a cliff, because, you know, that's a thing to do, she actually decides not to, as she wants the King of Monsters to be there as well, in order to take the plunge with the rest of his people. Meanwhile, we have a kind of a bit of a heart-to-heart -heart between Quirky Guy and Janna, as they kind of talk about the fact that Quirky Guy always wanted to be, you know, weird for the sake of being cool, not just to be quirky. As Janna tells them that, you know, being weird is cool, you know, being weird is cool, being quirky is cool. And with that, uh, Quirky Guy kind of succumbs to his injuries and explodes, which completely took me off guard. I was not ready for that. I wasn't expecting to see someone just bite it like that. I know the guy was a big character, but that... Oof. 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 <laughs> and much to the horror of everyone else who realizes, oh god, we're going to die. Meanwhile, we see that Eddie and River are trouncing through the forest, um, taking this opportunity to try to get Globgor to the magical sanctuary so that they can heal him and save him. Meanwhile, as Marco tries to talk to Star, she's not really having any of it, and she's actually come to the conclusion that magic is the root of all evil the force of evil that she needs to fight in order to save the multiverse, which, you know, uh, gets the agreeable of, agreement of everyone in the tavern as all of them have magical problems of themselves. But, you know, Marco comes to the realization that, yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of problems because of magic, but it's only because of magic that we're together but they're interrupted by a serving of pudding cups from a gentleman across the bar, namely Glosseric. However, Star takes this opportunity to try to have a conversation with Glosseric 
in private. Meanwhile, Eclipsa asked Moon about if she knows any weaknesses of the Solarian warriors because of the fact that, well, Moon was the one who gave them the powers. But, you know, after a brief amount of thought, she doesn't think of anything. And Eclipsa lays it all out on the table that they have three options. Stay here for all of eternity, um, go back and she unleashes the whispering spell, you know, the spell with no name all across Muni, damn the consequences, or, you know, Eclipsa, Moon, Star all team up and just whoop some ass. And while Moon is kind of on board with that last part, she... You know, thinks about the fact that Star doesn't even want to talk with her, only to see Star um, running into Glossaric's eye in order to have a private conversation in his mindscape, which just honestly kind of reasserts uh, Star's thought to just destroy magic, as she's just gotten really tired of all of Glossaric's shenanigans. And, you know, Glossaric kind of tells her to cheer her to chill out and ends up sending her to the Hall of Queens, the grandma room with all the various tapestries and magical elements and so on and so forth. But after a little bit of time, Star notices that, you know, while Eclipse and Moon's tapestries are whole, um, all of the other ones are missing the various queens in them only for Star to notice that all the queens are out and about in their ghostly forms, observing something specific. And when Star walks forward to view what they're all looking at, <clears throat> she realizes it, that it is the finished tapestry, her tapestry, all from all the way back and into the wand. <clears throat> A tapestry that shows from what Star uh, interprets as her having ses successfully gotten rid of all magic. Although I'm not quite sure, you know? Star just kind of blasting away like this. I would almost say that it kind of looks like Star has absorbed and become magic itself, although I'm not quite certain. And as Star observes this and kind of is just like, well, this kind of strengthens my resolve to you know go about destroying magic she then realizes something very prevalent the fact that marco is nowhere to be seen in this depiction and she realizes that with the loss of magic that means the loss of marco and while you know glossaric ends up telling her it's specifically the loss of glossaric himself you know without magic he will cease to exist marco will be safe just back on earth and without magic, they will never see each other again, which, you know, immediately kind of stresses Star out as she realizes that she, she thinks about it. She feels that that isn't fair and she starts to kind of try to get the tr the tapestry to kind of redo itself, to re-include Glossaric to some degree as she feels that that's just not fair. That's not the way it should be. But Globgorin, probably the most you know, sympathetic moments he's ever had tells her that the tapestry is done. There is no changing what it is to be. And Star realizes that, yeah, that's it. That's the way it has to be. All magic must be taken from, um, from Muni in order to stop a, um, Me Mina Loveberry and all her Solarian warriors. With that, it'll come to an end, and the people can live in some form of peace. And you know, Star starts to think that maybe Toffee, for all his evil doings, was actually right in the end. Only for Toffee's depiction to immediately just turn to her and yell surprise, which catches me off guard because I'm just like, is he alive in there for some reason still? You know, what's going on there? And did he talk to Star as well? And Star ends up emerging from Glossaric's headspace and she reaffirms to Marco that she will destroy all magic and Muni. 
and thus ends our episode. And what an episode it was. Just Moon's revelation that she was the one that set all of this up still just kind of takes me aback. I wasn't expecting her to do something like this. I understand why she did it, but it still feels like she made a bad situation kind of worse. You know, it feels like she kind of caused Mina to have too much power. And I guess she assumed that she would have had the ability to take all this power away, but she, you know, just couldn't do it. She just couldn't bring herself to actually take the power away because Mina got one up on her in the end. And now that Moon is now technically the Queen of Muni once again, you know, what happens now? Will she truly end up remaining Queen of Muni past this point? Because Eclipsa never wanted the gig to begin with. That's the thing. She never wanted to be Queen. But with this, you know, will Moon ultimately rule because she just has a natural affinity to it? Will all power end up returning to Eclipsa in the end? It really makes you wonder. Um, and with the Solarian army betraying Moon and waging war on all monsters, you know, how are they going to end up convincing the Mumins in, that the monsters are alright? Because so many Mumins have just taken to joining Eclipsa uh, during the course of all this. I was wondering why they had barricaded themselves all in, you know, after when Star had come back, but it was in preparation for war with the monsters, but honestly, the monsters haven't really done anything to them. And what of Hekapu? You know, Hekapu doesn't seem seems to be the only one not really on board with everything. Is she ultimately going to help them out? Because Hekapu always seems to be split between her duties on the Magical High Commission and her deep friendship with Marco specifically. Will that end up coming into play? And will Globgor be saved? The tapestry says she will, he will, but we'll just have to wait and see in order to ramp up the tension. Yeah, but the tavern's pretty cool. The fact that um, apparently um, Glossaric's going to be taken out of the picture, that's a bit of a shocker. I wasn't really expecting that to happen. Um, you know, I have to wonder, will he really just be destroyed just like that? No more Glossaric? It kind of feels weird that he ended up being the cause of his own doing by bestowing the wand upon the Butterfly family in the first place, only for Star to just come out and destroy the whole thing for the most part. And will Star ever trust Moon again, honestly, now that everything like this has gone down? Um, just really raises a lot of questions that all have to be explained at the very last episode. You know, with this showdown, apparently, with Mina Loveberry. But then there's also the fact that the world of magic is fully corrupted. What's going to happen there? What's going to change there? What's going to be altered? Yeah, uh, it really kind of makes you wonder, you know, how does this all come to an end? Because that's a lot to wrap up within the last few, ep last episode, you know, a half an hour, that's a lot of time, but... Tell me your thoughts in the comments section below. If you like this video, feel free to leave me a like or a dislike, depending on how you felt about it. And how about subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss the final episode of Star vs. the Forces of Evil, at least a review of it. And if you want to find me on social media, just Google Doos Diz Din. I am everywhere. And until the next video, just remember, magic can't solve all your problems, and sometimes it's the very cause of all your problems. Bye-bye!